HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, book author Patrick Kennedy presented at the Hopkinton Historical Society, we have a preview of this year's Hiller Boys Lacrosse team and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, Boston Marathon director Dave McGillivray talked about his book release at the Hopkinton Public Library prior to this year's race. I'm sitting on the curb and I'm looking around and, you know, I'm turning my head between my legs, but feeling sorry for myself. And I said, boy, this place looks a little familiar. And then I looked behind me and there was the Evergreen Cemetery. And that's where my grandfather was buried. And that son of a gun said he would be there. Now he wasn't there physically, but he was there spiritually. He said he'd be there waiting for me on the marathon course. He kept his end of the deal. And I thought, well, if he kept his end of the deal, I have to keep mine. And I just mustered up the strength and picked myself up and finished. Crossed the finish line in four, it took me four and a half hours. And I finished in 1973. And on that day, as an 18-year-old, I said I was going to run this race every year for the rest of my life and honor and tribute the lesson that my grandfather taught me about earning the right to do these things. And now I'm 63, and I've run it every year since, and Monday will be my 46th consecutive block of night. So really what this book is about is, when I was little, I was little. <laughs> But I had big dreams. I had big dreams. And I still do. I still do. Well, people say to me all the time, you've done all this running and you've done all this things and whatever. And what's your best accomplishment? I said, oh, that's a good question. What's my best accomplishment? Well, my best accomplishment is my next one. Just about a month ago, I launched a book called Dream Big. Um, it's basically a inspirational story about how I got started um, running in the Boston Marathon um, 46 years ago. So hopefully um, it'll inspire kids to do just that, dream big, follow their passion, and accomplish um, great things in life. Uh, so it was very kind for the Hopkinton Public Library to invite me in to speak to a group of um, people here from Hopkinton, especially school children, and um, do a book signing. And I was well attended and I was very pleased and very grateful for the opportunity. Excellent. And if someone would like to see more about your book or perhaps purchase your book, where could they go? Uh, the book's up on um, Amazon.com. It's also being sold in Barnes and Nobles. Um, and we have a website um, that um, Dream Big website, so you can look that up and see more information about the book. And uh, how's your schedule uh, with the big day coming up? Um, it's um, it's getting busy, um, but uh, we we've done this a few times before. It's not our first rodeo. Um, I think uh, the only thing, obviously, that's um, sort of challenging us right now is just the forecast and you know, what it's going to end up being and how we need to prepare for that and um, how we need to communicate to all the participants about what it might be and how to take personal responsibility for themselves. In the uh, worst case scenario, if there is thunder and lightning, uh, what will be the plan? Well, it just depends on where it is and when it is, so it's going to be a game day decision. Um, as to um, exactly how we'll respond to it. But uh, we have you know, contingency plans in place, and so depending on 
what what happens on race morning. Um, you know, we'll be able to put those in place if we need to. But hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, Mother Nature will be kind and we'll be able to get all the races off on time and get everyone safely out of Hopkinton. Despite the weather not being too warm, the 2018 high school spring sports season has started. And this past week, I caught up with the Hopkinton Hillers boys lacrosse team. Will Abbott, midfield. DJ Sloan, attack. Hunter Goodrow, defense. Dan Norton, coach. Last year, the Hopkinton Hillers boys lacrosse team finished the regular season with 14 wins and four losses, and in the playoffs, fell to Westwood to end the season 14 and five overall. This year, led by head coach Dan Norton and experienced captains, the Hillers are looking to take the next step in postseason play. It's been a lot of fun. We've got a great group of captains, as you can see here from the guys that just spoke. Um, and I think we've got a pretty deep team. Um, you know, as I said before, they're very receptive to feedback and very coachable. And, and uh, we've been pushing this group pretty hard, harder than we have in previous years because they can take it. And uh, we're very excited to get going. Should be a good group. Uh, practice has been pretty good for us. We've just been focusing on working hard and coming with a good attitude every day. Uh, we're really emphasizing uh, having fun this year because I think if we have fun, we're going to enjoy the game more and have a better time, and that will lead to more success. Yeah, I'm just excited to play. We've had a couple weeks of practice, and I uh, think our team's ready to go. We can't wait to play tomorrow. Uh, love coming to practice. It's always a good time. And, you know, defensively, we uh, make sure we're always putting in work, focusing on the fundamentals, ground balls, footwork, and all that stuff to make sure we're as consistent as we can be. Uh, we're really focusing on our fundamentals here in these early practices before we can really get into the team stuff. Uh, we're making sure that everybody can catch and throw and uh, learn our systems and everything like that. Despite the rough weather so far, the boys lacrosse team is ready to play this season. Uh, we've been lucky enough to be on the field the whole week, so can't complain. What are some of the things you got the team working on early in this? Um, as the guys say, we're just focusing on fundamentals uh, because you know to, to run our systems offensively and defensively uh, without fundamentals, we really can't get anywhere. So uh, just making sure we have all. All 24 guys on the same page and, uh, you know, just working on some team building stuff and, and trying to have fun, like these guys said. And uh, lastly, very windy day today. How much of a conflict has the weather been? Um, I think for these guys, not so much because they're running and sweating. But us as coaches, we've been, uh, you know, a little bit cold. But, uh, you know, we can't control it. And uh, we've been just trying to control our effort and our, our fundamental work. And, you know, if we have a game like this tomorrow, it's supposed to snow and we're going to be ready to play in it. So. I asked about what some of the goals are for the season. Uh, yeah, we have some uh, pretty ambitious goals, and, but uh, really we're just going to work our hardest every day, going to be focused and have a good time. Uh, personal goals, I'd like to improve my field IQ, make sure I'm, I'm the best I can be and help out my teammates, and I also want to leave a lasting impact on the program as a whole from youth to high school. Just to get better every day, work as a team. Just got to focus on ourselves. We can't worry about other teams and uh, continue to improve all year. Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll look back on this year's Boston Marathon. And Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider plus a whole lot more. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. Welcome back to HCAM News. This past week, book author Patrick Kennedy presented his new book at the Hopkinton Historical Society, Bricklayer Bill and the Untold Story of the Working Man's Boston Marathon. Here's a look grandfather's uncle or my, or my, my great grandfather's brother was, uh, was Bill Kennedy. Um, he was born in 1883 in Harlem, New York City. Um, actually, I have, uh, I have a little slide of Harlem now. Yeah, there we go. Um, and uh, then when he was, uh, those are his parents, uh, so my great, great grandparents. Um, and then when he was uh, by, so, uh, sometime like, between age seven and 12, he moved to uh, Porchester, New York, um, which is a town kind of, uh, it's like 12 miles north of the Bronx, I think, um, and um, which was um, part of what got him into marathon running. Uh, is, is anybody familiar with the uh, 
this kind of forgotten marathon that took place in 1896. Like we all know Boston, the Boston, you probably, I'm sure you know, you know the Boston Marathon is, is the oldest, it's the oldest uh, continuously run marathon in the country. Uh, but there was one that took place six months before the first Boston Marathon that happened in New York and then it wasn't repeated. Um, they didn't hold it annually after that. So, uh, but it went through Porchester and um, Bill was 12 years old at that point and uh, he was so excited he kind of jumped in to the road when the, when the leaders came through, the, the guys uh, in, in the lead, and he and his friends, you know, pretty much every boy in town, as he said, uh, jumped into the main street and just ran, ran along with them and saw them off at the, at the railroad bridge. Um, and that was kind of a watershed moment in his life. I got him into the, um, you know, into racing. Uh, let's see, so, oh, as far as how the book came about, um, so again, so, so Bill's younger brother, uh, which I do have a picture, so there's, so he's in the middle there. Uh, that's my, in the middle is my great, Great. Uh, that, in the middle is my great grandfather, and next to him is uh, my great great grandfather. I was speaking here at the Hopkinton Historical Society about uh, the book I co-authored uh, with, with my father, Lawrence W. Kennedy, "Bricklayer Bill: The Untold Story of the Working Man's Boston Marathon." Uh, and in short, it's about a relative of mine who survived typhoid fever, um, a fall off a five-story building, uh, some train and car accidents, and uh, went on to. Uh, to victory in the nation's premier marathon back in the early kind of scrappy decades of the sport. And uh, how long have you uh, researched this sport? I, it took uh, five to six years, over over, over five years um, working on it, um, you know, part time while working full time, uh, even even in collaboration. So it was um, with, with my father, my co-author. So about five five six years. And is there somewhere that uh, somebody could uh, purchase this book or find out more information? Yes, um, if you go to the UMass Press uh, website. It is it's on Amazon as well. Uh, but if you want to support your uh, local Massachusetts um, state uh, education system, uh, it, it's for sale uh, at the UMass Press website. All right, thank you very much. Sure thing. You can view the entire presentation from Patrick Kennedy on a new edition of HCAM News Focus, airing soon. This year's Boston Marathon may have been a rainy and wet one, but it certainly was a fun one. Here is a look back at some of this year's Boston Marathon festivities that took place around town. For the 26th year, John Hancock brought some of the elite Kenyan athletes to Elmwood School as part of the Scholars and Stars program. Prior to the event, some of the students studied Kenyan culture and had a chance to meet with some of the biggest marathon stars Kenya has to offer. Here's a look at another fun-filled day at Elmwood. You having a good time today at Elmwood, meeting the students? Yeah, we have a great time to talk with them, teaching them, showing them what you see in Africa. So we are in Kenya, so we are, it was a great time, you tell me, yeah. You like all the uh, work they've done uh, studying your culture? Yeah, even I was telling them the culture, how do we do in Kenya, so it was a great time, yeah. Hi! What's your name? Peter. Yeah, how do you like uh, meeting the runners today? I like it. Did you, uh, learn I don't a lot like it. I love it. What? Did you learn a lot studying about their culture? Yeah. Excellent. Is there someone that you like talking to the most when the runners? Um, Philemon. I drew a poster of him over there. Hi. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I got a second too. Me too. Oh, look at that. I'm on the news. <laughs> Ah, it's very amazing. We like the work that the kids have uh, drawn. It's very wonderful. Especially the way they have uh, drawn the sketches. We see that it resembles us very well and the way we used to run. So they are really fast in learning and drawing the right uh, uh, pictures. So we like it very much. Mm. Excellent. Is this your first time in Hollywood? Yeah, it's, very, it's our first time in Hollywood and even in the United States. So the first time. And we are very much happy that we have been invited also. We have seen many great things that uh, our welcoming people are here and very, are now friendly. So we like it very much. Are you ready for uh, the big day on Monday? Yes, we are very much okay because we have been preparing for had enough time there in Kenya to prepare well for this uh, big day that we have been waiting for so long. Great to be back with you. It's great to see you still hanging out here. Um, I just look at, at the excitement on their faces and you can hear the kids behind us. 
for the last couple of weeks, the teachers really focus on this after they get their, their tests out of the way. And I've just had a couple of conversations with some of the teachers. And this is just one thing that they will never forget the rest of their lives. I've talked to some of the Hopkinson track and field athletes, and they talk about how memorable this whole thing has been to them. And it has inculcated in them a love for running and, and the whole sport. So I think it benefits Hopkinson's team. And while I have a second, let me also mention that there are studies out there now that show that memory and focus are improved by running and, and good exercise. If you're a swimmer, that's fine. If you bike, that's great too. But academically, high school kids and college kids do their best among all sports teams in track and field academically. So there's something to this. And it's all great for the kids here. And I can hardly hear myself think right now, Tom. You know, one inside thing to tell all your viewers is I've watched last year in particular, some of the older people who have been here before, men and women, might be their second or third time at Hopkinson and running Boston. They take the first timers aside from Kenya and they tell them all about what's gonna happen. And you should see the face of the first timers as they're hearing the story. They love it, they start laughing, you see all their teeth, so they know they're in for a real treat. And uh, for those that don't know, you also broadcast the Boston Marathon. Uh, you want to call it this year? I do, I'll be doing the international telecast and co-hosting that as we go out all over the world. We're, we're shown all over Africa, all over Europe, um, it's really a, a wide range of Germany, France, I can go on and on. We'll get the Boston Marathon televised and we'll hear about Hopkinton as well. All right, well, hopefully the rain holds off for us a lot. I look forward to it and it's an honor to be with you guys out here. Please give a Hopkinton welcome to Mr. Stephen Sambo. Give an Elmwood shout out to Mr. Philemon Rona. Let's give a cheer in, in Elmwood for Gladys Chichir. I will tell you about it and I'll show you the video that they made for me. My and message is to the kids is dream big, believe in yourself, and take chances. All right, and um, could you talk about um, how long it took you to run these seven marathons? How many days were you away? I was gone in total for 10 days. So the first time that I took on the 777, I was gone for 16. So we chartered a plane this time around and it was much easier and a faster transition each time. And um, I understand you're training about uh, seven days a week. Um, what's that like? I mean, do you ever feel uh, pains from all that running? So I feel very fortunate to have running the running community behind me, and, and everybody's always willing to go for a run with me. And but I, I really say, listen to your body. If something doesn't feel right, or you're hurt, or something, back off until until you feel better. And and to show up not finishing is not an option so prepare your mind study the course and put in the work and you mentioned you've been running marathons since you were 17 years old off the top of your head can you think about how many marathons in total you've completed i know for sure i've done 64 marathons and my current goal is to finish a marathon in all 50 states and i've done 34 states but i've done 17 boston marathons my favorite day of the year i run the boston marathon every year what makes the Boston Marathon so special? The crowd support, you know, and, and the Red Sox updates and Wellesley Screen Tunnel, the right on Boylston, left on Hereford, right on Hereford, left on Boylston. It's, it's, there's nothing in the world like crossing the finish line of the Boston Marathon. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, April 20th at 5 p.m., Worcester area writer and visual artist Judith Ferrara shares her poetry inspired by life and nature on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. And on Monday, April 23rd at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HKM TV. On Tuesday, April 24th at 6.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HKM TV. On Wednesday, April 25th at 7 p.m., 
Members of the Hopkinton Women's Club interview the hopeful candidates for Hopkinton Town Office on the Women's Club Meet the Candidates Night, live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, April 26th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Appropriations Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the Hopkinton Middle School Jazz Night will air. And stay tuned for the upcoming Hiller Spring Sports season. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. It's great to see you still hanging out here. Um, I just look at, at the excitement on their faces and you can hear the kids behind us. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, the teachers really focus on this after they get their, their tests out of the way. And I've just had a couple of conversations with some of the teachers and this is just one thing that they will never forget the rest of their lives. I've talked to some of the Hopkinson track and field athletes and they talk about how memorable this whole thing has been to them. And it has inculcated in them a love for running and, and the whole sport. So I think it benefits Hopkinton's team. And while I have a second, let me also mention that there are studies out there now that show that memory and focus are improved by running and, and good exercise. If you're a swimmer, that's fine. If you bike, that's great too. But academically, high school kids and college kids do their best among all sports teams in track and field academically. So there's something to this, and it's all great for the kids here. And I can hardly hear myself think right now, Tom. You know, one inside thing to tell all your viewers is I've watched last year in particular, some of the older people who have been here before, men and women, might be their second or third time at Hopkinson and running Boston, they take the first timers aside from Kenya and they tell them all about what's going to happen and you should see the face of the first timers as they're hearing the story. They love it, they start laughing, you see all their teeth, so they know they're in for a real treat. And, uh, for those that don't know, you also broadcast the Boston Marathon, uh, you want to call it this year? I do, I'll be doing the international telecast and co-hosting that as we go out all over the world. We're, we're shown all over Africa, all over Europe. Um, it's really a, a wide range of Germany, France, I can go on and on. We'll get the Boston Marathon televised and we'll hear about Hopkinton as well. All right, well, hopefully the rain holds off for us a lot. I look forward to it and it's an honor to be with you guys out here. Please give a Hopkinton welcome to Mr. Steven Sambo. Elmwood shout out to Mr. Philemon Rona. Let's give a cheer in, in Elmwood for Gladys Chichir.
Mr. Norbert Keegan. Welcome here to Elmwood School for Joffrey Kirui. How do you like uh, being back here at Elmwood today? I feel like home now. It's so fun to see all kids excited and all, all right. Make us so happy. And uh, are you ready for the big day? I am, <laughs> yeah, for sure. How was training going? Good? Really good, yeah. It has been good. Excellent. And uh, do you always just look forward to coming to the summer and the kids? I know, just uh, love to meet the runners. Always love to scan and see those smiley faces out here uh, the day before the race. I don't like this, uh, like a few days before the race, so it's good. Yeah, it brings back a lot of memories <laughs> yeah. from being in Elmwood. Just so much fun just looking back. and seen all the fun that they could have now. And it's really inspiring to see like people that have made it to the, the big stage of running because often running isn't very uh, yeah, we popular only, sport. Yeah, we only do like dual meets and stuff. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Did, they give, did they give you any tips at all? Uh, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Always have fun. Dance, yeah. dance hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and how's the track season going so far? I think we're just going good. <laughs> going good. Yeah, we had first meet yesterday. First stop. First meet, first stop. Yeah, first meet yesterday. It was, it was tough, it was cold, but we did it. And we yeah, had fun. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was so exciting. There was so much going on. It was so cool to see the runners too. Just like I remember it from third grade. So cool. And how was it meeting these uh, elite runners? Did they give you any tips? <laughs> um, not tips, but they were really funny and really personable. Like you see them running, and you're like, oh my god, they're like superhuman. But they're just like us. They just can run really fast. Yeah, I remember when I was in third grade, it was like the coolest thing. Everyone coming here, like to Hopkinton, my hometown, it was so cool. Yeah, it was so cool to see all their faces light up as they entered each room. Like every single time the announcer was like, oh, and they've won this and that. They were just so excited for them, and it's really exciting.